E3 2021 dates and more details out. A leak claims that a Sonic Colors remaster is it coming. Microsoft could be partnering with Kojima for his next game. Pac-Man 99 comes out of nowhere. All that and more on this edition of the MeCast Station. Hi guys, DPX here reporting today. The news on the MeCast Station. Let's get into this. Out of nowhere, a new Nintendo Switch Online Battle Royale, if you will, was announced and came out the very next day. That is Pac-Man 99. This is similar to Tetris 99 and the late great Mario 35, may it rest in peace, where you play a game of Pac-Man and you're competing against 98 others, so you are trying to be the best of 99 people playing Pac-Man. At the time of recording, I actually haven't had the chance to play it yet, but I am certain it is going to be a fun time and a fun little game to play, you know, every now and then. Games like this, I don't like to play hours on end. I'm sure it's a fun little game to play for like a good few minutes and then move on. But still, it's a free-to-play game. It does have some paid DLC where you get to play around with like Galaga and stuff but sort of in a Pac-Man style, which I think is really cool. As long as this doesn't get deleted, which I don't think it will, Pac-Man 99 should go over smoothly. What do you guys think about Pac-Man 99? Hideo Kojima, I'd say one of the most influential and recognizable figures in gaming. He, of course, has his own company now, Kojima Productions, which he had Death Stranding as his first game since his departure from Konami when he made games like Metal Gear. Sony was the publisher for that game and therefore Death Stranding was a timed exclusive for the PS4. Well, Microsoft might be publishing Kojima's next game. According to GameSpeed writer Jeff Grubb, he reports that Kojima is in talks with Xbox to publish his, his next game. This was after PlayStation dropped a trailer for Abandoned, their new PS5 game and a lot of speculation went around about that being Kojima's next game, but this article was to debunk that. This could be good for a multitude of reasons, this partnership. For one, say what you want about Death Stranding, it was a big exclusive for the PS4, so having Kojima's next game be published by Xbox and possibly be an exclusive would make for a compelling exclusive for the Xbox series. The other reason is that Xbox are trying to get big in Japan, as they are pretty much non-existent there. Getting a talent like Kojima for one of their games could help them out tremendously in that regard. What do you guys think about Xbox potentially publishing Kojima's next title? Alex Kidd in Miracle World was a flagship title for the Sega Master System, and did you know it was getting a remake? This isn't recent news as Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX was announced quite a while ago back at the Summer of Gaming 2020, but thanks to Squid Wario on the Discord server, yeah, I'm reporting on this because of you, a new trailer dropped revealing its release date of this game I didn't even know was coming. Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX will be coming to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch, and I'm sure it'll be backwards compatible for the PS5 and Xbox series on June 24th. It looks pretty cool. Alex Kidd in Miracle World was always like a fun game, but definitely hasn't really aged the best. So it seems like a cool and necessary remake, and we're getting it rather soon. What do you guys think about Alex Kidd and Miracle World DX coming in June. While on the subject of release dates, Neo The World Ends With You got a release date revealed. I kind of forgot about this game, but in a way that I shouldn't have because The World Ends With You is a fantastic game and a sequel is long overdue. Therefore, the sequel, Neo The World Ends With You, will be coming out on PS4 and Switch on July 27th, which is actually one day off, or one day after, to the day that the game came out in 2007, which I think is a nice touch. Not much else here, though. What do you guys think about Neo The World Ends With You coming in July? 
Streets of Rage 4 is a game that I really loved for both its existence and just how fun it was to play. Well, .mu has announced that Streets of Rage 4 will be getting DLC. This is the Mr. X Nightmare DLC, with a new expansion of the game, along with numerous new tracks, weapons, moves, and more, including a new playable character with Estelle Aguirre, who you actually get to fight, like, in a boss fight earlier on in the game. There are also two more characters to be announced as DLC, as hinted at the end of the trailer, so it seems that .mu wants to support Streets of Rage, Four with DLC over time. My only question is, why did they wait this long? Like, the game has been out for almost a year, they could have supported it with DLC then, and it's not like they were working on other games. As far as I know, the Streets of Rage 4 was their latest game. And also, no info in the trailer on when the DLC will be coming, or even the price was dropped, so we're left a little bit in the dark here. Anyways, this is quite exciting, uh, despite all the other weird stuff I mentioned. So what do you guys think about this? Final Fantasy VII Advent Children is a movie that exists. Yeah, all jokes aside, it's a video game movie that isn't terrible. I don't think it's really that good. I don't like how it's just an animated movie when, I don't know, just the animation looks weird sometimes. And it, But it does actually serve the Final Fantasy VII Timeline. Well, Final Fantasy VII Advent Children Complete is being remastered in 4K. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this the first time we are seeing Advent Children re-released with a significant up-res? It could be. It could be. I could be wrong, but it could be. Anyways, that's really all on that, not much. It's just a cool little thing. What do you guys think about Final Fantasy VII Advent Children Complete 4K Remastered. Jeez, that just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Deathloop is a game that I'm excited for, but I kind of feel like the only one who is. I don't know, I just haven't heard much excitement over this game. Anyways, it was supposed to come out in May, so next month, but it got delayed. You may remember the last edition of the Miicast Station where I covered numerous game delays. So I guess this adds on to it. It's kind of strange how Deathloop was supposed to be a launch title for the PS5, but then got delayed to May. But now, it's getting delayed again to September 14th. Hopefully this means that the game will be better as opposed to numerous delays being a curse for the game's final product as we've seen with certain games. Don't want to give names, but yeah. What do you guys think about Deathloop getting delayed? Hey, did you know that this year is Sonic's 30th anniversary? Yeah, Sega hasn't done much, if anything at all, with Sonic since the success of Mania and the rather disappointment that was Forces. And you would think that maybe it would look like they are gonna have something this year, but it doesn't really seem like it. Well, there have been rumors for a while that Sega ha was doing something for Sonic this year, and a recent leak has come out saying that a remaster for Sonic Colors is on the horizon. This was leaked in a German dubbing studio where it's listed in a localization company's credits. If this is true, and if it's leaked under circumstances like this, it is very likely that it is true, this would be something very much unexpected, but welcomed, as I personally think Sonic Colors is an underrated game and could use a re-release. What do you guys think about these leaks and rumors of a Sonic Colors remaster? Last but certainly not least, it has been confirmed that E3 2021 is happening digitally. Now I'm not quite sure why this is such big news, cause it was announced a while ago that E3 2021 was gonna happen digitally, but we got some new info. Specifically the companies that'll be there and the dates that the event will be going on for. The event will be going on from June 12th to June 15th. The companies present will be 
Nintendo, Xbox, Capcom, Konami, Ubisoft, Take-Two, WB Games, and Coke Media. There will also be no paywall, which I think is really cool, and for some reason there was a rumor that went around that said it would be locked behind a paywall, and you'd have to pay to watch the press conferences, and I think that was dumb and it was kind of stupid to believe, but it's still kind of a relief to find out that that is not at all the case, and it's free. It is also worth noting that Sony, for the third year in a row, will not be at E3, but also Square Enix and EA won't be either. You might also notice the absence of Bethesda, who usually have their own press conference, but remember, they're now owned by Microsoft, and Microsoft or Xbox has their press conference, so that's why, though they technically are there. Anyways, I'm excited because last year, when there was no E3, but a lot of companies still wanted to get announcements out, and at that same time period, it was a mess. You had companies like Ubisoft with their little presentations revealing nothing, and it was just dumb, and I missed E3. And I think E3 this year will be a lot more organized as it's always been. So what do you guys think about E3 2021 and the lineup and everything else dropped about it? And yeah, that'll do it for this edition of the MeCast Station. I'm DPX from the MeCast, signing off. Have a good one. We'll be back in two weeks.